Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another musical moment with the old time rock and roller. In these sessions, I try and tell my stories of the good old days of rock and roll. In 1975, I attended Dick Grove's Conservatory of Music to learn all about what it is that I had learned to play by ear. Now, I had a breakup situation with a woman that I was in love with. And if you've ever been in this situation where you have physical relations, a really nice time, you spend the night, you make love, everything's beautiful, but then in the morning you realize it's over. So I had gotten these chords, E6-9, E major 7. E6, E major 7. And I put them together in a rhythmic pattern like this. Now many of you will recognize this as the music to It's Over, sung by Steve Perry. That was a great recording. And before we could get our deal, Steve joined Journey. So it never made it to the big airwaves.
but we'll be taking a look in this video inside some of the songs and the lyrics behind them. Because as we said in my interview with Blackjack, songs written from personal experience are the best. Now I wrote a group of songs called Take It to the Top, Hook, Line and Sinker, Jimmy's Revenge, an instrumental for Jimi Hendrix, and I'm Not the Waiting Kind, and Tell Me Why. And we played these all in a group called The Force. It was probably one of the very first heavy, heavy rock bands, like Guns N' Roses, but before them. One song, Hook, Line and Sinker. It was a love song, but it was the kind of story where a guy sees a girl. It was a very upbeat kind of ZZ Top meets Aerosmith feel. When I first moved to LA, it was to reform the Wadsworth Mansion with lead vocalist Steve Jablecki. Now we had had a hit record called Sweet Mary I'm Coming Home in 1971. And the producer said, let's start a new band in LA. Steve, you're the singer and Forrest, you're the guitar player. Come out here, we'll write a bunch of new songs, we'll record them, we'll showcase, we'll get a deal, and we'll be back on the board. So one of the very first songs I wrote was one called Cape Town Retreat because I lived in Provincetown, Massachusetts at the tip of Cape Cod with a woman named Jane Mead. And the song was an expression about the love that I had and that we shared in our old Cape Town retreat.
Now I cut the first demo for a song called Tell Me Why, which is on my first album, with Tony Carey, the keyboardist from Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. And he sang the demo. And when I moved to Muscle Shoals, I pitched it there to them. Clayton Ivey at Wishbone, and he almost signed it. But it was during the time when Boogie Oogie Oogie and the disco craze was just going off the hook. And he said, gosh, this is a great song, but what I really need is another Boogie Oogie Oogie. So that one didn't get put out either. We did a TV show called Boston Live, maybe October of 81, somewhere around then. And it was every day at five or six o'clock on Boston TV. So you can see the band in action and get a feeling for how good we were. After I left LA, I met a friend, a poet named Lawrence Proman, and 
he had some great ideas. So I wrote a song that he sang. We collaborated on the lyrics and it's called Greybeard. It's kind of a reggae song about the Greybeard man and the preppy man. And it focuses on the inequality of the division of wealth throughout the world. It's a pretty cool song, actually. I remind. This poem is about the inequality of the division of wealth throughout the world. This poem is the tale of the yuppie man, the preppy man, and the graybeard man. And the poem reads, Graybeard, he got a say bottle of port, and preppy, he's bound for a Caribbean. Is remarked over a buck A boss days You forget your theology Poverty sucks Both have blood running through their veins And both get old with same aches and pains Animal parity And the jungle Now, when I relocated to Memphis in 1980, I had a, there was a guy in my apartment complex named Jim Lewis, and we wrote a couple of songs together, and one was called Police Woman, and we shot a video on it, and it was on all the local TV shows that did music. It was a lot of fun. You can check that out. It's on my website somewhere. Now, I first moved to Atlanta and I thought I would write an instrumental aerobics album, which I did. It never took off, but every song I wrote started with a certain heartbeat and, you know, it broke you up to you're really intense and then it had a wind down song. But one of the songs called Steppin' Out, I rewrote with lyrics and put it on my colorblind album and called it I Wasn't Looking for Trouble. I added a lot of parts to it, of course, but it was essentially the same riff. And a lot of songs will just start with a riff. Think Mississippi Queen by Mountain. You know exactly what I'm talking about or any number of Led Zeppelin songs for that matter. Now there are two songs on this record written by Mark Kaplan and myself when we were in the band Valhalla, which means Viking Heaven. One is called That's How I Want Our Love To Be. It's a very romantic song. In fact, I was contacted by Arista Records after I put this record out. And they said, I hear two hits on here. I need a third one. What do you have?
third song so I didn't get the deal with Arista Records but it was exciting that they had heard about me and called me up anyway and the other song that Mark and I wrote in Valhalla was called Lying Eyes all you bass players out there listen to Mark's bass line tell me if you can play it it's pretty intense the guitar solo is off the hook I'm telling you and the overall song is just different, it's unique. But it's of course a man and a woman confronting each other and saying you just can't hide behind those lion eyes. Now finally, the final song that actually gave me the wherewithal to put this record together was the title track, I Need You. Raymond Victor is a keyboard player and a vocalist, extraordinaire. He and Rob Roberti and Steve Fishman and I and some other people in 1975 toured all of Asia together. And when I heard Ray sing on that tour, I knew that he had everything, he had it, let's, let's just put it that, and you know what it is. Steve Perry has it, okay? So Ray came by, I had just written this song, he sang to it, and it was really hot, I loved it.
Snuggle up real close and start that fire below It's getting near the morning How long can love go on? The way you rock and roll me Keep me going till the break of dawn I need you I want you by my side So I had 13, 14 songs, all from demo recordings from LA, Hollywood, Atlanta, Memphis, Muscle Shoals, all over the place. And I said, my dream was to start my own record company so that I could call my own shots, put out what I wrote. If nobody bought it, well, Nobody bought it. I, I really didn't care. I was coming from the artist's perspective, is I've got something to say, and I'm going to say it, and I'm not going to be encumbered by what some CEO of Alligator or Blind Pig or Capitol Records or Columbia or anybody wants to pigeonhole me into. I'll have my fans, and they'll, they'll like me. And the ones that don't, you know, who cares, really? So this was how I Need You came together. So all I ask is if you like the video, hit the like. If you'd like to get more cool content, go ahead and subscribe. Tell some of your friends. Keep loving your heart, a song in your head, and I will see you down the musical story highway on the next CD review of Forest on Fire, my second record. All right, my friends, so long. No, I need you every day. When can I see you? I hate to be away. I think about you almost all the time. And it's not funny how you always on my mind, on my mind. You know I love you with all my heart. I really miss you when we're apart. And in the morning when I write you by mail. There's nothing moving, just no way to tell When love's gonna strike you down And your whole wide world's turning upside down 
Try 